Welcome to Mountie Days, Brea College's online news magazine, a unique way to stay in touch with Brea College. It's March 2010 and already so much has happened since our last episode. And so many things have also changed. Even Mountie Days itself has changed. We have a new team member, Matt Berger. He's a sophomore film major from Columbia, South Carolina. Hey everybody, it's great to be a part of Mountie Days team, but enough about me, let's get on with the show. And now that spring is here and temperatures are rising, Brea College is heating up. Let's take a look at some of the recent events and activities from the past couple of months. So long short term, the month long time in January of intensive study between fall and spring semesters when students and teachers alike immerse themselves in teaching or taking just one course. Short term was offered for the last time this past January. Over the years, courses such as scuba diving and value added foods courses have been taught along with more traditional ones. Mountie Days took a look at three courses offered this year that offered physical and intellectual challenges, but also plenty of fun. This introduction to Denmark, Danish sports culture, and Danish gymnastics is a non-competitive approach to sports which emphasizes conditioning, acrobatics, and rhythmic compositions. Students also learn to teach and spot for each other. That familiar face you see in the class is Mountie Day's own Mark Leslie. Um, Danish gymnastics was a class, it was a three-hour class that we had during the short term of 2010. Um, uh, it, it consisted of uh, dance, um, extreme conditioning. I mean, uh, it was a three-hour class, but two hours of it was extreme conditioning. We learned how to do front tucks, back tucks, front handsprings, uh, layouts. And for some people that were less experienced, I mean, simple things like cartwheels, and you'd be amazed at a how difficult a cartwheel can be for some people, but by the end of the class, you could definitely see the growth in everyone. In this course, students designed and built their own semi recumbent bicycle with salvage parts. The course provided the students with basic engineering knowledge and skills in welding, grinding, and forming raw materials. And at the end, some pretty cool rides. But the front part comes from my wife's bike, and there was, there was a problem with her bike. It had a lot, of, a lot of resistance to the pedaling, and we couldn't figure out what it was. Come to find out, the uh, derailleur was bent, uh, so I got to replace the derailleur for free and build one heck of a cool bike for, you know, I think average cost in the class is about $30, uh, not counting if you bought your own bike, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but almost everybody in the class uses used a scrap bike, so materials and everything was about $30. The Berea students in this course collaborated with fourth graders at Berea Community School using interactive chemistry experiments to create young students' interest in science at the same time they're having fun. For the college students, the goal was to explore the teaching value of chemistry demonstrations and to allow college students to be effective role models for younger students, says chemistry professor Matthew Saderholm. I taught a course called Chemical Magic, CHM 304. It was a course in which uh, 10 students and I worked with the Berea Community School fourth graders to uh, bring uh, science experiences into the classroom. So my students actually planned the, what they were going to do. Um, I gave advice, but they really planned the entire experience down there. I think that this course, um, it connected my students to the need in the country for um, science education. I think that they didn't really realize how desperate the need was for motivating young kids to be interested in science as a career. What I hope my students would learn is that they have a lot of skills and responsibility to be leaders in the community. Uh, and also to remind them of how uh, essential science education is to uh, the success of our country. Short term hasn't gone away completely, but it has changed names and seasons. On the new college calendar, spring semester will start in January and end the first week in May, followed by two summer terms. The annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day March was held on January 18th. Students, staff, faculty, and community members met at Union Church for a gathering of prayer before the annual march down Chestnut Street to Brea City Hall, where Mayor Stephen Conley gave a speech. The march was a symbol of how far we've come, and most importantly, how far we still have to go. 
other events included the Come Let Us Break Bread Together luncheon, a Dr. King favorite song carillon concert, and of course the annual MLK convocation in which Mr. Bobby Kane and Ms. Gail Epps Upton of the Clinton 12 were honored and presented with the Brea College President's Medallion. Kane and Epps Upton were among a group of 12 black teenagers who in the fall of 1956 integrated the first public school in the South in Clinton, Tennessee, following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Brown v. Board of Education that effectively ended legal racial segregation in the nation's public schools. As young high school students, you chose, Bobby Kane, along with your colleagues, to face and overcome centuries of segregation and overt racism in the American South. It's my honor today to bring you into an elite group of about 14 people who've been given at some point the President's Medallion. Today I present you with the Presidential Medallion on this 18th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2010. February was Black History Month, and Brea College paid homage with a series of events and activities to create awareness. Black History Month is extremely important to Brea College because the founder of the month, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, is also a Brea College graduate. To commemorate Woodson and his great accomplishments, Brea hosted its annual Carter G. Woodson Weekend. This is a time when prospective African American students can come visit the campus and join us in celebrating the founder of Black History Month. Berea is full of interesting people with plenty of interesting stories. This past February, Adama Anyadike, assistant professor of theater, resurrected these tales in a three-week piece of experimental theater she called BC Cube. Based on true stories submitted by Berea students, alumni, faculty, and staff, Anyadike wrote three separate plays filled with comedy, drama, tragedy, and plenty of Berea spirit. Um, BC Cube stands for the Berea College Community Collective. And when I was offered the position by Stephanie Browner, the dean, um, I, at the time I was taking a devised performance class. And I'm still very intrigued with this idea of learning and building community through storytelling, through theater. So I figured what better way to learn this community I just joined than to gather stories from people. Berea is unlike any place I've ever lived. Um, in the sense, and that's why I moved here, there is a great sense of community here. Um, we still like any place, we have a lot of work to do. Um, but I really, I'm really glad that I've joined this community. Um, I feel like this project was extremely successful and um, I hope that we can continue to do more in the future. God has made of one blood all peoples of the earth. Berea College's spring break begins March 26th. While most students will be on the beach or back home with families, one student will be combining his passion for music with his need to give back. Breon Thomas is a junior technology management major from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He leads a group of students called SEE Him or See Him, which is an acronym for Serve, Engage, and Encourage, with an emphasis on God and the message of Christ. Instead of getting some R&R, they'll be traveling to several locations in the southeast performing at shelters, schools, and community centers. We sat down with Breon to hear what he had to say about the Home Run Tour. It's take your music back to the places where you came from. For me, it's places like shelters and, and, and schools and, and nonprofit organizations. On this tour, there's a, there's a concert component, so that means we have a, we have a band um, mixed of rappers and singers. Um, some specifics about the tour, we'll be going to Knoxville, Tennessee, and um, working with uh, the Salvation Army there. We got two tour dates there. Um, then from there, we'll be making a long little journey on to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Lawrenceville to be exact, and we'll be um, helping out a... Uh, a ministry called Kids for Christ, where we'll be having a concert at at a middle school, just to encourage the middle school kids, you know, and the high school kids uh, up there. And then we'll be taking another trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee, my hometown, where we'll be doing a, a, a concert with a ministry called Student Venture. I think this spring break, 
I have an opportunity to do an alternative spring break, which pretty much is a spring break where you go and serve. The name of the tour really says says it all. And we're just going to have a good time, man. And hopefully you can come to some of the shows. Two other student groups are doing service projects for their spring break. We will report on those in the next episode of Mountain Days. At 4.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 12, 2010, an earthquake with the magnitude of 7.0 ripped through the small Caribbean island nation of Haiti, leaving death and destruction in its wake. This disaster was felt all over the world, and for some Berea College students, it hit much closer to home. Rachel Matherin and Crystal Louis are both Haitian students working on degrees at Berea, but their lives grinded to a halt, at least for the moment, when they became aware of the tragedy that struck their country. It was devastating, and, and I, was, I was really shocked, and I didn't know what to think. I was, I was getting ready for the worst, actually. I really thought that, um, my family was dead, like my mom and my brother, that's what they were, because I knew where they would have been exactly at the time it hit, and I knew where it hit, and where it hit, almost all the buildings were practically collapsed, and I thought, you know, they were just dead. As fear rose and communication became even more difficult, Rachel Matherin received news of her family. Somebody, I don't know who that was, who sent me a text message saying that, my family is okay. I'm thinking it's a friend of my family knowing that I would be really worried. The earthquake hit on Tuesday, January 12th, and I didn't hear from my mom until Monday. And so that was like probably five or six days later. Berea College's Students and Free Enterprise Organization, or SIFE, did their part to fundraise for the Haiti victims. We had a chance to sit down with Lynn Gwynn in SAIF, we, we thought of doing a project for this, um, to respond to this event, because we think that SAIF, it's all about doing the work for the community. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to do something for this event. We, we placed boxes in student dorms. We asked for money to the donation and donated items from faculty and staff, and we went to churches. We raised um, a total of $200 for Haiti, and uh, we distributed this money to Partners in Health, which is an organization that distributes food and support for, ha for Haitians. We need everything, everything, you know, bare necessities, water, food, everything that you could think of, because before we didn't even have that much. And it's like that little that we had, it's now gone. And we have more people now that are like hungry and that are like homeless and they're still, you know, striving to, to survive, so we need everything. As tragic as the events of January 12th were, Rachel Matherin is very grateful to her Bria College community. I wouldn't have been able to go through it uh, without all the support I found here in Berea. Well, that's all we have for you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next time on Mountie Day 6, the spring edition. We'll be reporting on those student service projects we told you about. It won't be Berea gone wild, but it should be entertaining nonetheless. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mountie Days. Days.